Here's the sort of problem we'll encounter in linear algebra and need to be prepared to solve. If A is an m by n matrix and B is an m by 1 matrix, like a column vector, then how do we determine if the system AX equals B is consistent? And if so, under what conditions is it consistent? We've previously discussed this sort of problem in the case where A is an invertible square matrix. Link in the description to the lesson going over that. If A is invertible, we can easily solve this by just multiplying on the left by A inverse. That would cancel out this A and give us the unique solution that X equals A inverse B. But what if A is not invertible? In that case, we'll see in this video how to use elimination to solve the problem. So if A isn't invertible, we can use Gaussian elimination. We'll be able to determine if the system is consistent and under what conditions, because it may be the case that it is consistent only for certain sorts of matrices B. We'll do two examples. Let's get into the first one. What conditions must B1, B2, and B3 satisfy for this system to be consistent? B1, B2, and B3 are the components of the m by 1 column vector, B. So what restrictions must be placed on them for this system to be consistent, if any? Well, we begin by writing the augmented matrix for the system. Here are the coefficients of x1, the coefficients of x2, coefficients of x3, and the constants on the right. Now we'll perform Gaussian elimination in order to reduce this matrix. Link in the description to my lesson on Gaussian elimination. I'll walk you through it here quickly. Traditionally, you might begin by subtracting row 1 from row 2 and two copies of row 1 from row 3 to get zeros below the leading one. However, I notice if we subtract row 3 from row 2, we can immediately eliminate row 2 by adding row 1 to it. And that gets us here. Note we're also carrying these operations out on the constants. Then we subtract two copies of row 1 from row 3 to get a 0 below the leading 1. And then we will swap rows 2 and 3, which gets us here. Finally, to make this leading entry a positive 1, we'll multiply row 2 by negative 1, which gets us here. We've now completed Gaussian elimination, and this gives us the answer to our question. So let's take a close look at this row echelon matrix and see what it tells us. This last row is the row that's placing a restriction on B1, B2, and B3. Certainly, from the last row, we see that B1 plus B2 minus B3 equals 0. That's given there. That means that B3 must equal B1 plus B2. The other two rows don't place any restrictions on B1, B2, or B3. For example, you can see in row 2 that X3 is actually going to be a free variable because there's not a leading 1 in column 3. So whatever B1 and B3 are, you'll be able to adjust X3 to create a solution. And from this, the value for X1 could be determined also. So it's only row 3, which has all zeros here, that's placing this restriction on the third component of our column vector B. And this gives us our solution. AX equals B will be consistent if and only if B is of this form, so that the third entry is the sum of the first two. As long as B is a vector of this form, then this system will be consistent. Otherwise, it will not be consistent. Here's one more quick example you could try on your own. What conditions must B1 and B2 satisfy for the system to be consistent? Here's our system. There's B1, there's B2. We begin by creating the augmented matrix. Coefficients of X1 in column 1, coefficients of X2 in column 2, and our constants on the right. Then, we can simply perform Gaussian elimination to determine what constraints, if any, are on B1 and B2. This is a quick and easy example. We just have to subtract one half row 1 from row 2 to get this to be 0, 0. At this point, this isn't quite in row echelon form. We'd have to multiply row 1 by 1 over 10 to get this to be a leading 1. However, this is sufficient to answer our question. We see that row 2 places this restriction on B1 and B2. B2 minus 1 half B1, right? We subtracted 1 half from row 1, which is why we have that there. B2 minus 1 half B1 must equal 0. And so B2 must be half of B1. As long as that's satisfied, 
x2 can be whatever it wants, it's a free variable, and x1 will be determined accordingly. Thus, our solution is this. The system ax equals b will be consistent if and only if the column vector b is of this form, so that its second entry is half of its first entry. And that's how to use Gaussian elimination to determine if a system of equations is consistent, and if so, under what conditions. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you want to help support what I do, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get access to early and exclusive videos, as well as access to the lecture notes that I use in the lessons. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time Hand signs and abacus Finger count and calculus I'm the V to the T My parameter the rapidest Happens like this My lecture's the most prominent Dominant Call me the Morgan I get the compliments The union in together Like any time that we intersect Cause my opponents know they need